It's been an amazing uh, trip for us, by the way, and Charlie got in here today. As I say, I was dragged through the streets of Munich last night uh, <laughs> by some very, very nice people uh, uh, who were, we were hanging out with. And I, and I, I see Florian as well, a very nice man, who, who came to uh, pick me up in the airport. And I just did want to say thanks to, to, to a few of you guys, Wolfgang, and everybody's been looking after us. So, here's the thing. I just want to say thank you to the pilot today exactly. on the plane yeah. that happened here. <laughs> I don't know whether he's here or not, but you know, he's a great guy. We, we got a bit lucky ourselves back in 1994 with, with, with something that was very, it very It wasn't lucky, it was sheer talent. <laughs> <laughs> but it was something. Um, anything you want to add to that while I'm... No, no, you okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, all right. So we're going to try and do a, a, a version of this song that includes everybody if we can. That includes you.
once again. Absolutely winners. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Paul, how, how did you like the Hofbrau house? Well, I particularly like the whips. They were very good. Uh, I particularly like the food. But top of my list was probably the beer. It was very good. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. Yes, my God in Himmel. Please say it again. You didn't have the mic. Uh, my God in Himmel. Could be anything. I translated after you. Okay. Charlie. Um, Back in 94, Ireland had, has won two times in a row. So when I heard at the third position your song, I thought they will make it again. Really? Really. Oh. But, <laughs> I did, did. yes, that's my question. Did you? No, and the, the only one, the, the fellow that wrote the song was a man called Brendan Graham. Brendan also wrote You Raise Me Up, you know that song, You Raise yeah. Me Up? And The Voice, of course, as well. And uh, Brendan put money on it, on the bookies, and he won loads of money. <laughs> we didn't have any money, so we didn't put any money on it. <laughs> no, we, we really didn't. We were, we were there for the fun of it, and we're here tonight for the fun of it, you know, because it, it, as long as this music thing keeps being fun, we'll keep doing it. Is that right, Paul? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I have to ask this question, would you ever do Eurovision again? Well, I've been trying for the last 23 years to, to, to write a song for Eurovision. I, I've, I've had a couple of near misses, um, and I think when I saw Portugal win last year with a simple song, because they're the kind of songs I write, are simple songs, be easy to understand, and just, I think I have a few in the bag, but they never pick them, unfortunately. But hopefully, you never know, I'll try again this year, you know, keep trying. Maybe they should. Because, you know, Ireland was winning like every year. Yep. So, what happened? They got tired of winning. No, I have no idea. Listen, who knows? Who knows what happened? I mean, don't forget, things change. We, we were particularly lucky at, at uh, the three in a row because, again, a word you're all very familiar with here is zeitgeist. And we were very lucky to be right on the zeitgeist at that time of the unplugged thing. Yeah, music has changed hugely, uh, Eurovision has changed hugely, uh, um, the, the, you know, it was always political for sure, there's always politics involved, but there was, when the new voting system came in, by the way I'm not saying that's not why we're not winning because of the new voting system, but that changed things also, but I, I would think, as Charlie says, if you have something, write a good simple song, and he referred to the Portuguese song there, <coughs> you know, talking about being simple and able to understand it. That song, I don't speak any Portuguese other than Obrigado, and uh, that's the only word I know. And I watched that song for the first time, and it mesmerized me. And I said, that's a winner. And I didn't understand a word that beautiful chap was saying. And I said, that is a winner. And if it doesn't win, I'll eat my hat. In fact, I'll eat his hat. <laughs> have a nice hat. Can I say something? I'm going to ask you a question now. With all the, you know, the years that have gone by, and something I often wonder, if Rock and Roll Kids was in the Eurovision this year, would it win? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> maybe we put it in the game. <laughs> with, with younger versions of ourselves, yes, yeah. maybe. Just younger guys. Tom Hanks can be me. It's like, I'm just going to play me. Tom, but wasn't, wasn't the Portuguese song some, something like a reprise of this yeah. simple song, of this heart-going song? I go back to things like No No Lita, Remember way back for Italy, way back how many years ago was that? The 60s. No, no, Lita. No, no, Lita. How have I started here? <laughs> so, so, but you keep watching the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, what do you think about it in these days? I don't get to see it as often as I used to, and, but I, I, I did work, and I'm sure you did the same thing at home in Ireland, I worked on the jury uh, for about four or five years. And that was very enjoyable because it is something that you must, you really must watch within the context of Eurovision. I think the problem is when, when you start to compare it 
two, two other things or what you know what's top 40 or whatever all, all of that that's going on today I think you're, it, that's a mistake but I think the show is a spectacular I think it's a shame or it's unfortunate that you that, that they have it, a qualifier that they you get to see the set and you get to see the big spectac spectacle before the main event I think that's I would love to see that resolve in some way shape or form uh, because that's part of the big surprise you know but um, I think again I, to, 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 to quote Shay Healy uh, who wrote what's another year he, he said that um, in, in a very light-hearted way he said the Eurovision Song Contest is is he said it's the longest running soap opera yeah. on television <laughs> for years you know and, and still 200 million viewers I, absolutely. I mean, and, and back, I know when we were we were involved, there was like 400 million viewers at that point. Now, the sti still, two, so they've cut that in half. Still, 200 million viewers. It's fantastic. It's a, it's like it's a great night's entertainment. And for people in our business, it's very very difficult to be able to uh, well to get a chance to represent your country and uh, and to win, which is pretty pretty wonderful too. What about what about Germany this year? Is there another a little love? Uh, is there another one of those coming? Well, Ralph just left. Oh. <laughs> we, I asked him if uh, when he's going to. Well, the, the, he said they don't let him. Oh. So, so, so let's hope for the best. Uh, we are trying to be uh, to, uh, to make uh, something like the twentieth place or something like that <laughs> to improve at least a little. Paul, Charlie, thank you so much. You made a dream come true that Ken could have heard rock and roll kids here on stage in Bavaria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, please. So, as a twist of fate, everybody from Eurovision Song Contest who's singing here, who gives us the honor, uh, gets uh, to get uh, uh, to become an honorary member of OGA Germany. So welcome to our club. Thank you. It's our pleasure to have you in our club. And this is for you. And this is for you. Flowers for you. Thank you. Can I mention something very, very quickly? If I could just mention, I don't have a copy of it with me to show you, but um, because Ireland won the Eurovision so many times, I, I think we hold the record of, of sev seven times. Um, we've just released a, a DVD, um, and it's called Irish Eurovision Winners, and it was a great opportunity for me to interview all of the Irish Eurovision winners, and particularly to be able to interview Charlie because it was a, honestly it was a unique experience to ask Charlie what it was like from his perspective on the night because I just you know because the two of us are like Bonnie and Clyde or whatever you know but um, however and, and he's just such a wonderful artist in his own right and songwriter it was a great opportunity now but here's the hard sell it's available somewhere online I would love you guys if you're if you're if you're f fans of this particular thing it'd be great if you could pick up a copy of that it would be that would just keep myself and Charlie in in, in jelly jelly babies for the next year <laughs> I'm particularly good in this, yeah. you know, I'm probably the best thing in it. <laughs> he is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paul Harrington, Charlie McEvigan. Thank you so much.